family. Today we're joined by Irina Tashenko Luhan. Irina does incredible work. Formally, she has worked with Universal Aid for Children of Ukraine since 1999. She served as the USA Scholarship Program Director in Odessa for 10 years, and that's before moving to the United States. Today, she and her husband live here and continue to do this global work. Irena facilitates correspondence between the USA team and the children in Odessa. Enjoy the conversation. Irina, it's an honor to have you here on the podcast. Where are you right now? Thank you so much. Uh, it is an honor for me to be here. I am in Rockville, Maryland, and uh, I'm happy to be part of your family. Oh, well, welcome to the family. You know, we can jump right into it because while I'm really interested in what your childhood journey is like, I must say you've worked intimately to promote healthy opportunities for children across the world. So let's begin, if you will, by you sharing your knowledge of the current challenges that children are facing due to the ongoing crisis in the Ukraine in particular. Yes, thank you for your question and for your interest. Um, Universal Aid for Children of Ukraine that I represent exists um, about 30 years in Ukraine and we started long before the war when ukraine became independent we raised several generations of orphans giving them education feeling sense of dignity and the war threw us back in so many years and now the children whom we started with 20 25 years ago when they were in the orphanage abandoned and we provided them with education they come back to us, they are in their 30s, 40s, and they say, we have this diploma and uh, we have a good profession, but the chain of um, production is broken. There is no food in the stores. We have children, we don't have food to feed them. This is what Ukrainian children are facing now uh, in all over Ukraine. And particularly we work in Odessa, Ukraine, which is a port city and we have so many difficulties so many many challenges and um, so we have uh, a lot of work to do there yes and i i commend you and i'm sure my family joins me in doing so for the work you're doing irena it's been estimated that around one million children in the ukraine require humanitarian assistance. Shed a little bit of light on any specific needs and vulnerabilities of these children, if you will. Yes, I think this is um, not an exact number. The exact number is much more, and it's unfortunately growing every day. Uh, I want to say a good thing that um, the orphanages where the children were staying before the war uh, all of them were evacuated to Europe. We are very thankful to our neighbors, to Romania, Poland, Germany, Bulgaria, all these countries, Italy, Spain, that host our children. Uh, in Odessa right now, we have the families with children, refugees, who are like the second time refugees who were running from the war in 2013 and 14 from Donetsk and Lugansk region, uh, region and uh, they ended up in Odessa, which was relatively safe at the time. So we hosted hundreds, hundreds of families with children that left everything behind, came, just gr grabbed whatever they could, sometimes without documents and only had left clothes that they were wearing. These children, uh, the second time families experience this war that is like following them. And also we have the department children's uh, hospice uh, that children could not be evacuated from Odessa. They have life-threatening conditions. And also we help them uh, in uh, sanitary uh, items uh, with baby formula, with food. And uh, the families um, in Odessa that have many children, they suffer a lot uh, because there is not enough food. They uh, parents cannot get a job 
and they literally face hunger right now. And, and along with this, uh, the World Health Organization is estimating that there are about 1.4 million people in the Ukraine who need medical assistance. Uh, you may have a closer number to that, I don't know, but these people can't afford the medical assistance. How is Universal Aid for Children helping with that as well? I mean, you're impacting at some deep yes, levels. Yes, yes, that's absolutely right. Medical assistance is needed badly. And um, right now with the war, because the chain of supplies is broken, it's harder to bring medicine. Local pharmaceutical companies do not produce, hardly produce anything. So the prices went up and the uh, welfare of the citizens, of course, will down almost to zero. So they cannot afford even simple treatment. So Universal Aid for Children uh, has very good friends. Uh, this is a Rotary Club, Rockville Rotary Club District Club. And we have like-minded organizations uh, in Odessa, which is um, uh, um, which is Odessa Dream, the Road to Home, and uh, Peace Council of Odessa Executive Committee. So we all work together, and we do the fundraisers to uh, help children um, with their medical treatment. And of course, our sponsors, what is different uh, uh, with UAC, what differs from other organizations? We are a family, just like your podcast is a family. One family goes to other family. Um, we have many sponsors who personally sponsor the children in their needs. Uh, I'll give you the example. Several years ago, we started helping children with special needs. And uh, we had several students, blind, legally blind students from blind orphanage for blind children who um, were admitted into the law academy. So they are becoming lawyers, but it is very hard for a regular orphan, regular student to survive. But for blind children, it's even harder. And at the time when we took this very hard decision, um, I just have a phone call out of the blue and the lady uh, called Maureen, she tells me that she has um, like a dream um, to take care of a student with the special needs. And I say that that's exactly my case. Here is Olga. She's blind and she needs special computer. She, she needs Braille um, books for her study. And she supported her personally bought her a computer and took care of her. And recently we needed the surgery to remove her eye because it affected the other eye and developed more um, medical conditions. So we needed money to do the surgery. And Maureen with her church, with her friends, she completely covered the cost of this surgery. This is amazing. This is beautiful. This is humanity at its best. Many people say that uh, the spirit and the tenacity of the people of Ukraine is so incredibly important to the success that can be achieved in any small or large measure as they work their way through this war. You and I both know that you need more than spirit and tenacity. You need humanity and you need relief from other others to uh, help that process. The example you just gave of the positive impact that universal aid for children is achieving is dynamic. Let's talk though about the Orphan Teen Scholarship Program as well. Irina, how does the Orphan Teen Scholarship Program help to facilitate educational and vocational opportunities for those orphaned youth transitioning into adulthood? Yeah, thank you for this very good question and very important part of our um, work in Odessa, in Ukraine, is the scholarship program. It started when our founder, Clara Pascal, visited Odessa. Um, it was right after the Iron Curtain fell and she was uh, um, member of their crew 
um, making a film about Odessa orphanages. And she kept visiting Odessa after she adopted her son, Luke. She was the first foreign foreigner adopting after the meritorium for adoption. And she noticed that children were just pushed out of the orphanage when they age out. And if they were abandoned at birth and they don't have any relatives, they don't know who they are, um, they join the delinquencia, uh, the crime groups, and the girls uh, very um, are the victims uh, of uh, prostitution and human trafficking and others. And she decided to create this scholarship program. What she did, she connected every orphan graduating from the orphanage with a particular person in the United States who were ready to pay their scholarship, which is $50 a month during their study. And it worked. We have wonderful, wonderful results during this more than 25 years. We have sailors, we have teachers, we have scientists, ophthalmologists, uh, all professions, name any profession, because there are more than 25 educational institutions in Odessa. And when we spoke with the children who were about to leave the orphanage, we asked them, uh, what do you want to be? And they say, oh, I want to be a teacher, but I will never be able to make it because I don't have support. I don't have a family. And Clara used to say, we are your family. We will help you. But what about my level of education? I will never pass entrance exams. And she says, we'll find you good tutors. We'll find you the teachers and you will make it. And we really did. And the, uh, the way it changed their lives is dramatic because to be a doctor, uh, one of our graduate students um, who graduated from medical university, Taya, uh, she was our gold star student, the best straight A um, student. She was for one year uh, after graduating in Great Britain residency. And now she's here in the United States uh, she has a job, she's prominent, she's wonderful, she's successful in life. Of course, um, right now with the war, it all makes it so difficult. And honestly, this year, I doubted whether scholarship program is still possible in Ukraine, uh, in Odessa, where sometimes there is no electricity, it is um, dangerous to leave the house because air raids are several times a day and only education by computer on, online and we were very happy when we found out that this year uh, about 15 orphans uh, in spite of the fact that the war is going they decided to uh, to pursue higher education and in their buyers they say I need this education because I want to be a good specialist in free, independent Ukraine after the victory of Ukraine. It, it just, it, it uh, warms my heart. Yes, yes, mine as well, my goodness. Uh, Irina, what was your childhood like? Uh, I was a happy child. I was born into the family. Um, my mother was an engineer, my father was a pilot who was in love with the sky. The best thing he said was when you take off um, at night and uh, you don't see the sun and then the plane goes up and you can see the sun. It was a very, very beautiful description of his work. I had a grandmother and a grand... By the way, that's a description of your work as well, <laughs> with what's going on. Yes, we help our students to see the sun, to elevate them from yeah. the black, dark night, and to see the sun, to see successful future. Thank you for that. Irena, what an amazing story. And the uh, similarity of your dad's message to you about coming through the dark to the light and the coming through the dark to the light that you're bringing to so many people is incredible. What other stories from your childhood do you care to share? I think knowing that helps us to get an understanding of why and how you're doing such amazing work today. My childhood was seeing my 
parents, my grandparents working, uh, coming home tired, but they uh, were doing a fair job and they were proud of what they were doing. My grandmother uh, was a dentist, a mother engineer. She uh, made um, a great job and she loved what she was doing. And of course, my father always was my hero. So I looked at them. I tried to to, to learn from them. And I think this was the lesson, the biggest lesson uh, in my childhood. It's certainly a beautiful lesson, and it's especially a beautiful one for us today, working hard and uh, creating good value, uh, not just for yourself and your family, but for communities. At this point in your life, how do you define personal success? You know, it's uh, to be positive. To be positive, uh, to believe in your dream, to work hard and never give up. Yes, yes, I, I believe that too. Your lessons from the Ukraine sound very similar to the lessons my parents taught me in Tauber, North Carolina, growing up. Um, one thing I also have learned over my life is that collaboration is often crucial in addressing complex humanitarian issues. How are you working with other organizations, any local or international, uh, to maximize your impact? Uh, local, as I mentioned, it's Rotary, uh, our Rockville Rotary and the district that helps me. And Rotary is also a another family. It's the third family already today we're mentioning because Rotarians all over the world can come to the meeting for the Rotary Club and share uh, what they're doing, share their concerns, share their ideas and other Rotarians support. And recently, besides visiting all the Rotary clubs in Metro Red Line of Washington, D.C., I became a member of ICC, uh, Intercultural Committee, mm -hmm. which is um, organized specially uh, for helping Ukraine. And uh, Rotary clubs in Ukraine unite, and uh, they share what projects they have, and like-minded clubs all over the United States can join this or that project. And we're also we're, uh, seeing what other clubs are doing. And we work with the Rotary Club in Odessa. There are three clubs. We work with Odessa Club. So we're thinking about um, creating a new project with the support of Rotary Clubs. And of course, in Odessa, we have Odessa Dream, the road home, and we have Odessa Peace Con Council, City Peace Council that supports us. Of course, um, on your own, you cannot achieve anything. You need like-minded organizations, their support and uh, their uh, friendship. And how about individuals who want to support what you're doing? People who independently want to offer their assistance? Uh, people who uh, join our family uh, as individuals, they're always welcome. And they are the people who um, support scholarship program. Um, the scholarship program works this way. We meet with the orphan, uh, the uh, aspirant to join the program, take picture, ask the girl or the boy to write their biography, um, what happened in the family and uh, what profession he wants to acquire. And post it on our Facebook and our site, USC. We have two USC sites. Mm -hmm. And wait, <laughs> and wait for the word to come across the globe and for people to contact me. And until re recently, um, luckily, the number of people who want to help were exactly the number of scholarship students we have to support. It's a miracle. And every year we wait for this miracle to happen. And it had been ha happening every year. So uh, right now we are waiting. Yes, uh, uh, there is one village close to Ukraine, uh, close to Odessa, uh, where five orphans uh, when, uh, entered higher educational institutions. 
And today I receive their pictures, their biographies, the stories they tell about themselves. They are, you know, they cannot uh, not to touch you because what these children had to go through in their childhood that now you just want to do everything to help them grow. And they are all very ambitious. They want to get this education. They want to be educated in order to work in Ukraine, to build a society. They already say, uh, after all this bombardment, when the villages were wiped out, so many buildings damaged, we have to rebuild. We have to start restoring our nation. And this is what in their dreams, they are already in their dreams. They are there in the victory, starting to rebuild. And this is very positive approach. Oh, my. Oh, my. Irina, the emotional toll of this work is no doubt significant. How do you and your team prioritize your own self-care and well-being while dedicating yourselves to this cause? It's not always easy. Uh, because during this war, Russian Russians just say that Ukrainians do not exist. And it, it was said, I understand Russian, I speak Russian, and I can listen to Russian propaganda. The Ukrainians are not a nation, they do not exist, and we need to kill them all, including the children. That they all need to be drowned, and the women don't have pity on anybody. And this is official propaganda that uh, Russian people hear and watch every day from their screen. And it's like a poison. Uh, if I listen for 20 minutes, no, I never listen 20 minutes. Like even five minutes is too much. It's too hurting. And. Um, I want American people to know that I heard their leaders saying that Ukraine is not a, a, a their goal. It's not their aim. They say we live bad because London lives good, because Paris lives good, because America lives good. So we will not stop until we conquer Great Britain. They already propose to nuke it. And they even, um, there is a theater, a very famous theater in St. Petersburg, very beautiful choir with good voices. So they are singing the song, we go on a submarine to nuke New York. And this is the song the Russian people are singing now. So it is very hard uh, to keep positive and I know people who were affected by this very badly. One very dear friend from New York, a very famous painter who was um, helping from the very beginning of war with everything, uh, sending, uh, uh, making fundraisers, sending money there. And I speak with him today saying, Vlad, we need this and that and that, please, quickly. He's trying to tell me, okay, Irina, we'll, we'll cover this. Tomorrow his wife tells he died at night. So one month and a half of this terrible work and, and this stress, it just took a young person away. He, he just burned at his work. So um, we need to somehow find a balance. Because we cannot always think about bad things. We need to get distracted, to go look at the clouds, at the sky, at the trees. And this is my relatives over there in Ukraine tell me, just let it go. Don't, don't listen to the news for a couple of days. Just relax a little bit and live one day at a time. And that helps. And this is why we do not post on Facebook only terrible pictures of, um, for example, uh, a trade center where we used to buy food for their refugees monthly. And we had pictures of them with the cards, filling the cards with flour, milk, olive oil. And then the next day, we were lucky that we did it the day before. Just this uh, mall does not exist anymore. There's big flame and demolished 
all the ruins of, of this and just the, um, they show that the uh, little containers with a carrot, with potato, that they're ashes, ashes, ashes. They turn into ashes, everything. So we cannot look at it, think about it all the time. That's why we have such things like, for example, recently we had contest of drawings, children's drawings, and it was held by our Rockville Rotary Club Peace Committee um, to ask children how they see peace. And I at first was like skeptical, just ask the child whose mother wakes him up three times at night wraps in a, a blanket and carries uh, to the underground shelter. Like my, my granddaughter is there in Odessa and my daughter-in-law says she tries to cover her ears because it's very loud. When these missiles fly, they are ooh, and then boom, and, and you don't know which boom is there, your house, neighboring house, whatever. They don't know when they come out of there, what they will see around. But my granddaughter says, don't cover my ears. I'm not afraid. So the children ha have such survival mechanism, and we're very thankful for that. And the children, I was surprised. They all jumped in. They all participated in photography contest, in cartoon contest, in drawings. They kept sending me all their uh, pictures. And uh, I was just amazed when I see the boy whose family, um, so there's a mother and three kids, no father, and they were in occupied village. When Russians started, just what, what uh, Arabs are doing, I'm sorry, in, in Israel now, just coming and shooting everybody. So that's what they did with Ukrainians. No electricity, no water, no food. And they decided the mother was outrageous. They decided the only way to save the kids will be to try to get to Odessa through the occupied territory, through the minefields. And the kids at night were crossing the minefields. And the Russians, actually, when they saw somebody crossing, they, they, they killed them, they shoot at them. So luckily, this family is there. So these kids went through this in their life. And uh, the boy submitted a picture, bouquet, uh, white flowers and strawberries and he's holding it. And he says, for me, peace is when I can give my mother a bouquet of strawberries and white flowers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that is peace for him. Yeah. And wow. um, the boy who took the first place uh, is just the road to peace. He put like sign on the road, very simple. And he's, this is a road. And this is psychology. This is his understanding behind it. It's not something extra special. It's just a road. You go on the road. You make one step at a time. And this is how we can come to peace. And he got the um, first prize. Uh, we had a very nice uh, competition um, where children from different countries participated. But Ukrainian kids and children from uh, school in Israel. They took all the first, second, and third places. And I have at home the whole bag. I'll show you the whole bag of medals. So we made these medals for the children already this way. This is a medal. And we are waiting for honors to each child. And also Montessori school. The teacher um, suggested that her students will write personal support messages to all these winners. And I have the whole uh, pack of envelopes with personal encouraging letters to each one of our winners. It is just, it's wonderful. And then we think to gather them all, of course, if there will be no air raids and give them their medals uh, and uh, celebrate them, their efforts, because it was dangerous. They um, came to the UAC office between the air raids. We don't have the uh, underground shelter. In Odessa, only the kindergartens and schools are open if they have underground shelters.
we unfortunately we don't. So it was recently my, my, they all came my. and they participated, and now they have the, a huge amount of medals, and we'll give them the cake, and they will celebrate the peace and the peace. I I, I hope the peace will come. Yes, the, yes, yes. And even as uh, conflict, war, and protests continue across the globe, and we're all seeing it happening, Guatemala, Israel, it, the the, yes. the Africa, African countries. Uh, the situation in the Ukraine is ever evolving. How's your organization adapting to changing circumstances and emerging needs in the region? It was difficult because, you know, uh, we felt like we're constructing a very beautiful building. So we took the orphans, we gave them the hope, and we provided them with education and medication if they needed a surgery we raised the funds over here and then we see how february 23rd 2022 this building abruptly started falling down and the needs are so big we're a small organization we're not a big organization we are a family-like organization working in a particular area of Odessa, of, of Ukraine, in Odessa region. And we know it's like, it is a family. We know everybody personally. And we see these stories, these needs. Of course, uh, we had to add refugees since 2013, but there were refugees that came from Lugansk and Donetsk. But now we have in you know, Odessa people who also lost their housing, who don't have enough money, just don't have a job. So that's why, of course, uh, we have to work more and to help much more than we were helping before. The young, the young boy uh, you referenced just a few minutes ago, uh, who participated in the uh, peace initiative, yes. um, art initiative, said one step at a time. What yes. a great lesson. What other lessons have you learned about resilience, empathy, and the human spirit from your work in the Ukraine? I learn from them. I, I learn from these little children that they are pure, you know, they, they are positive, they are optimistic. And when I looked at these, all these uh, pieces of art, photographies, their drawings, it gave me so much strength to continue for them because they really want this peace. They want to live and we need to do everything to protect them from war and uh, to let Ukraine uh, provide their children with a peaceful childhood. This, th this is beautiful work you are doing. Is there any closing message you want to share with our family before we go four for four? Yes. Uh, please enjoy every minute of your life. Please enjoy every minute. Be happy. Surround yourself with people you love and with the things you love. And uh, do not let negative thoughts to overwhelm you. And also, please remember that um, it's a two-way street. People treat you the way you treat people. So share your optimism, share your love, share your care with others, and it will come back magnifying and will make your life worth living. Thank you. Thank you so much, Irina. Let's go four for four now. I'm going to ask you four questions. You'll give me four answers. There are no wrong nor right answers. They are only your answers. And the first question is, you get to invite four people to dinner from any time in history through present. Who's at your table and why? Oh, that's a very, very nice question. Very, very nice. You, you are a magician. You are... Uh, in possession of a time machine <laughs> and I can bring anywhere from anywhere in, in the time and in the world, the people. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, you know, the first person I really to bring back uh, for this dinner is my great grandmother, Ludmila. 
uh, she was very young when the revolution took place and she lived through through the hunger th through the revolution through the civil war through the world war uh, two very very difficult life and uh, she told me about hunger when in 32 33 russians uh, took away all the food from ukrainians and ukrainians were dying and they could see while walking along the streets uh people who don't eat they become very fat and big excuse me then the bodies explode and they saw these but the people were still alive it's terrible terrible memories and she was the widow with uh, five children just to ask her where she took this resilience the strength to continue uh, her life during these very very hard times i remember her she was already in her 80s in her 90s so of course and i was a little girl we could not have these serious conversations i just overheard uh what she was talking about and i really wanted to invite her to dinner to treat her to a nice dinner that she hardly had ever in her life this is one so the second one uh, will be um, Paul Harrison, uh, who is the founder of Rotary. Uh, he was uh, the lawyer in Chicago in 1906, I think. Uh, he did not like uh, to have dinner on his own, his lunch break. So he invited his friends uh, to have meals together with him. This is why I want to invite him for dinner. <laughs> to have <laughs> with me. And tell him what a big way Rotary uh, made since that time. We almost eradicated uh, polio. How many uh, Rotary clubs are now and what they are doing, how they are helping. And ask him whether his initial vision of the Rotary um, really is accomplished what we are doing that it'll be very interesting. Uh, my husband and I are Rotarians, and my husband is a Paul Harrison Award uh, recipient. So we remember him, and we're very thankful for his four-way test. Is it true? Is it fair to all concerned? Does it build good relationship? Is it fair? Uh, so we still check everything what we do with this four-way test. Uh, the next one, of course, uh, can it be um one invitation but for two people this is your dinner <laughs> yeah just because you know i wanted to invite gagarin he's the first cosmonaut uh -huh. but how can i invite him without neil armstrong so they mm -hmm. are two connected not connected geographically but in time and in their mission so gagarin was the first to see the earth uh, from cosmic ship and nail who made the first step like it was a small step for him but it was a giant leap for the whole humanity how how they felt what they felt at the time just i'm very curious about uh their feelings and i i would really love to have dinner with them and uh, of course the fifth one already angelina jolly angelina jolly this is a a woman, she's not only an actress, she's a very talented actress, her Maleficent and Mr. And, uh, Mr. Smith, it's wonderful. But what attracts me to her, that plus to being a very, very talented actress, she's a humanitarian and she's a mother who adopted um, children she adopted three kids from different countries and then she had her own three kids biological kids all, uh, they are all her own and uh, how she managed to be um, an actress to be a mother and then humanitarian 
uh, work. She visited, I counted recently, maybe 15 countries. She worked in the United Nations uh, in refugee program, and she went to Kosovo. I uh, was listening to her interview about her trip to Kosovo. It was about 10 years ago. And I completely saw it different Angelina that we see in movies. She's beautiful. She's wonderful. She does absolutely incredible things helping these refugees. And she does it with so much positiveness. She sees so much grief, so much suffering. And she comes like the fresh air and she brings improvement. She makes her life better. And she enjoys every step of her journey. I really admire Angelina Jolie. Is amazing. I really would be what honored if my dinner. <laughs> what a dinner you're having! My goodness. Let's go two for four. What four pieces of music by artists are you listening to these days, and why? Thank you for your very good question. Um, my husband and I. Um, like Andrew Rear very much, and we always uh, listen to his orchestra. Here's my husband leaving. <laughs> Sorry about that. For, for his humanitarian the podcast. <laughs> for his humanitarian mission as well. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's a good Samaritan advocate, helping um, people. Um, refugees also to receive their status. Bring me away for the very, court. very good organization. But um, Andrew Rear is very talented, and we, uh, when we found out about a year ago that he's coming to Washington, we got the tickets uh, a year, almost a year ago, and recently visited his concert. Uh, his um, orchestra uh, plays uh, Strauss music. And uh, he says that the miracle happens every time in every country that he's and his orchestra are visiting. When people hear the walls, this beautiful music, they all stand up and they all start dancing. And it happened in big arena here in DC, <laughs> Washington. Mm -hmm. I saw these people just, they could not sit. They got up from their places. They started dancing. And he's 74, I think. He is so young. Uh, he was dancing. He was jumping. He was joking. It was like uh, almost three hours. It went like five minutes. And they were like, what? It's oh, People didn't want to go home. And oh, he said, okay, unfortunately, our evening. And everybody starts applauding and shouting, no, no. <laughs> like, you don't want to go home. No. <laughs> the thousands of people <laughs> they did not let him go and there are people who actually travel with him he's traveling today he's in washington next day was concert in new york that travel with him they see the world and every evening they come to his concert <laughs> it's an amazing person so he's one who are the one. other three my goodness he's a hard act to follow yes the other violinist called ara malikian he is a Lebanese-born um, person with uh, Armenian uh, roots. Uh, he got education in Germany. Now I think he lives uh, in Spain. And his violin is magic. Please listen to his violin. Uh, very beautiful music that uh, touches the, the deepest uh, strings of your heart. Very, very beautiful. I, um, my advice for you to listen to this. Uh, then mm, the third one, let me see. Uh, of course, Jodassin. Jodassin is a French singer. And uh, he is of Jewish, uh, Ukrainian uh, roots. When his family came to New York many years ago, and they did not have documents, and they said, we are from Odessa. And from Odessa, in French, it um, sounds Dodessa. Mm -hmm. And they wrote in his documents Dodessa, and then he 
change it to uh, Dasen. Dasen. He is from Odessa, <laughs> actually. And uh, his um, very beautiful songs that the whole world is singing um, about you. Um, and if not for you, um, Indian summer. I love this music and uh, it let, let me um, let go of all the concerns. It's healing. It's very, very beautiful music. And uh, the fourth one you asked for four is the Ukrainian rock band called Ocean Elza. Mm -hmm. And the singer is uh, Svetoslav Vakarchuk. Very beautiful, very strong music songs and the songs are filled uh, with pain for ukraine but at the same time um resilience and resistance and one of his songs uh is called i will not give up without fighting and he wrote it even before the war yeah. beautiful beautiful uh i I think a lot of people are going to be making additions to their playlist right now. Uh, let's go three for four. Irina, what four books are you, uh, do you think are the best for our family to read right now that you would recommend and why? Yeah, thank you for your question. It's a very good question. Uh, I certainly can recommend, uh, just share uh, my favorite books. Uh, the first one, I would say, this is Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. Uh, I read it um, first in Russian, then in Ukrainian. I started learning uh, English in English, in French, and the last time I, I was reading it in Spanish. And every time I discovered a new depth in this book. So at first you can think it's a book for children. That's what I thought when I was a child. And then when I be, uh, became older, I realized, no, that's for teenagers. <laughs> then I thought it's for middle age. And I thought, oh, that's for advanced aged people. <laughs> because it teaches the wisdom. And you can take from this book as much as, as you can take. It's up to you how much you want to take from this. And um, every, everybody who will read it, they will make the discovery of their own. But my um, main advice is uh, there are many stories in one. And one of the stories is this little prince and the rose. A little prince was living in a planet, um, very little planet. Actually, this planet exists. To, uh, I recently uh, confirmed... Uh, the history of um, discovering of asteroid in reality repeated mm -hmm. what was described by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry in his book. It really happened twice. The first time they didn't have enough information. The second time they collected enough information, just exactly replica of what he predicted. And they gave the name uh, Antoine de Saint-Exupéry called his planet, um, asteroid B216. And a real asteroid is called B216, uh, which, is, uh, which is also uh, in um, another hexagonal um, calculation where uh, not 10 digits, but 16 digits. It's the same B216. So this prince lives in this um, little planet, likes to see the sunsets. And I always was admiring how he can watch and enjoy the sunsets as many times as he wants to. He just moves his chair and the sunsets again. He moves the chair oh. and the sunsets again. And I probably was thinking about it too much because I really was able to enjoy the sunset for two and a half hours. Wow. <laughs> Last year, we were flying from Minnesota to Las Vegas uh, during the sunset, and the plane was moving together with the setting sun, and I felt myself like this plane is my little uh, planet, <laughs> and I can enjoy the sunset. 
But when the rose started growing in his planet, it was the only one rose and he took care of it. But when he came eventually to the earth, he saw the whole flower beds full of roses and each one was as beautiful as his rose that he missed so much. So the wisdom here, I think, is when you meet your rose, you need to recognize this is your special rose. This is your uh, person, your ha half of you, your, your half, your significant one. And uh, to let this person know that he's unique or she's unique for you, the only one. And um, no matter how many other roses are there, um, this is the key for happy relations, happy marriage. Beautiful. Are there three other books you recommend? Yes, there are three other books that I recommend. Um, one, The second one is Secret, called Secret by Rhonda Burney. It uh, has an interesting story for me. I heard about this secret, secret, but the information was not available in Ukraine. It was in Ukraine at the time. And then we had two wonderful volunteers coming from the United States to work in the orphanage as positional therapists. Uh, we don't have positional therapists uh, in Ukraine. And when I was asked to translate, I don't know how to translate what they're doing, what their, <laughs> what their job is. And they did a wonderful job with the children, special needs children, Down syndrome children at uh, orphanage for abandoned babies. And we had conversations with them. And I said, you know what, this secret, I really want to know the secret. <laughs> and they, after they left, they sent me a book. They bought it here in the United States, Secret. Uh, and I know the secret now. <laughs> <laughs> the secret is... The third book. What's the third book? <laughs> yes. The third book is um, uh, Mary Kondo, a Japanese writer. Uh, who teaches how to declutter your living space. And I think it's very, very helpful because as soon as you should not um, accept, admit negative energy and uh, toxic uh, people in your environment, the same way you have to peacefully let go of the things that you do not use. And what's and the I, title of the book? Uh, say it again? The title of the book? The title of the book is uh, um, The Art, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. Oh, okay. And how about the fourth book? And the fourth book. Wait a second. Oh, yeah, it's uh, Barbara King Solver, um, Bean Tree uh, and Animal Dreams. It's about a lady who adopted an Indian girl and uh, her adventures, uh, relations with the rest of the world, with her daughter. Very, very interesting. And you really, uh, it teaches you a lot. Thank you so much for sharing those. We're going four for four now. Irina, what four pieces of advice do you share with our family now and why? And if it's advice that was given to you, would you please give homage to the author of it by mentioning their name? Uh, my four pieces of advice to everybody who is listening is please enjoy and live fully every minute of your life, every day and every minute. Enjoy everything and notice positive things that are happening to you. And very important to be positive about everything. Surround yourself with like-minded people, positive, successful. Somebody said that uh, if you are surrounded by four millionaires, you will be the fifth one. The same way I can say if you are surrounded by four people with good humor, happy people, successful people, you will be the fifth one to join the company. And of course, in order to receive something, you have to give something. Similar attracts similar. The law of attraction never fails. It's like a radio station. If you tune your radio station, your heart, 
to receiving positive energy and start radiating it. So the positive energy of love, of success, of understanding, of friendship will come to you. Oh my, oh my. Irina, thank you so, so much from my heart to your home. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. It's a pleasure for me to be here. Big honor.